Okay. So hello everyone, and uh, thank you for being here today. I represent you my thesis uh, under the direction of uh, Arnaud Debuch and Anne de Bois, which is about diffusion approximation for dispersive equations. So a diffusion approximation um, describes multiscale problem, uh, which depends on a parameter epsilon. Uh, more precisely, in this kind of problem, there is uh, two processes uh, which vary at different time scales. The, the first one um, is a, a rapidly uh, varying process which uh, drives the other one uh, by entering as a coefficient in the, um, in the equation satisfied by the, by the slowly uh, varying one. And uh, diffusion approximation allows to, to better understand the, the limit as epsilon goes to zero of these systems um, where um, decorated noise appears and, um, and involve um, diffusion processes. We use this, um, this kind of, uh, of approach uh, for two problems. Uh, the first one is the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, which um, appears, for example, in uh, nonlinear uh, physical, uh, nonlinear optic problems, such as, uh, for example, the diffusion of light in, a, in an optic fiber. And the Zakharov system, uh, which describes uh, rapid oscillations of the, the electron density uh, in a ionized plasma. First of all, uh, I will present the Pertrup test function method um, because it's a, a crucial uh, tool for, for the study of our problems. It was introduced by uh, Papa Nicolaou, Struck, and Varadan uh, in, uh, in 77. And uh, this is the uh, the method which is uh, used in the, in the majority of, uh, of uh, diffusion approximation problem. So in a simple model, let x epsilon uh, satisfy this equation uh, where uh, the process uh, Z is a random process uh, satisfying uh, several regularity properties that I will detail later. Um, we denote by Z epsilon uh, the, scaling, the rescaled process uh, Z in uh, T over epsilon. And uh, we will study the infinitesimal generator M of the process. Uh, okay, of uh, of the process uh, Z and L epsilon, the infinitesimal generator of the couple X epsilon Z epsilon. The um, infinitesimal generator is a, a good tool for the the study of this uh, kind of process because. Um, it's allowed to characterize the, the law, and, we, and it's very linked to the, the equation that uh, satisfies uh, our process. So let's apply the, the, the generator L epsilon to a, a specific function phi. So here phi is, uh, is written uh, on the slide. Um, we get the following expression, where the first term uh, equals zero because, uh, in fact, phi does not depend on the, on the process Z. Uh, however, the, the last term of this expression uh, introduces a, a singularity uh, in epsilon, which is of order uh, minus one over two. So we need to, to add a, a corrector, phi one, and uh, applying, this, uh, applying this, um, this generator to phi plus square root of epsilon phi one, we recover another expression on which we can see that uh, choosing the right phi one uh, will allow us to uh, to make this singularity vanish. So that's what we do. Okay, that's what we do. And we, uh, we obtain the, the following expression where, uh, a priori, there is no more singularities uh, in epsilon. Um, actually, uh, we'll see later that uh, the process, uh, the rescale process Z epsilon behaves as a negative power of epsilon. So uh, the second term of the of the right hand side of the equation uh, need to be uh, to be compensated. So we introduce a second character, phi two. Um, note that uh, here in the expression of phi two, we have to remove the the, ex uh, the expectation under the, the invariant uh, measure of the process Z um, in order to be able to solve the Poisson expression and to invert uh, the infinitesimal generator M. Uh, finally, if we define phi epsilon as uh, the function phi 
phi plus uh, its two characters, we get uh, for the generator applied to phi epsilon uh, the following expression, where there is no more um, order uh, terms of order of negative order in epsilon, but uh, only term of order zero or greater than zero. Um, thanks to this uh, this method, uh, we will be able to to identify. Uh, um, a limit quantity, which in fact will be the, the infinitesimal generator of the limiting process uh, of uh, our different systems. So first I introduce uh, the first problem uh, of my thesis, which is the nonlinear Schrodinger equation with uh, a random potential. So nonlinear Schrodinger equation um, has been studied a lot because it's, uh, it appears in several uh, physical problems such as uh, quantum mechanics, or uh, in our case, uh, non-optic uh, non problems. Um, it, came, it comes from a Maxwell equation, and you can see that uh, we have the, on the right-hand side of this equation, we have the two, the first two terms which are classical for the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, and the last term which introduces uh, a random process M, which is rescaled in, in time, um, and uh, this term is, uh, is similar to the term that was present in the perturbed test function method. So we work in, with solution in the energy space, and we assume that the nonlinear term is subcritical. Uh, the process M is a random process which has uh, good regularity uh, properties, and which uh, takes values in uh, the subordinate space HS for uh, A uh, greater than N over 2 plus 3, uh, for technical reason. As uh, for the perturbed test function method, we define the process M epsilon, which is the rescale process in time. So in order to, we have the first uh, theorem, which is the main theorem for, the, for this problem, that for t greater than zero and zeta between zero and one, uh, assuming that x epsilon zero converges in low to x, uh, to x zero in the weighted space uh, sigma zeta, then uh, the, the process x epsilon, uh, which is solution of the previous equation, uh, converges in law to x, uh, which is solution of the stochastic nonlinear Schrodinger equation, uh, which is uh, equation three. So in this equation, f and q are defined uh, above and uh, depend on uh, k, which is uh, the, uh, covariance, the covariance uh, uh, kernel of the, the process uh, m. Uh, note that um, x epsilon is solution of a partial differential equation. And at the limit, we, recuper, we uh, obtain the, the solution x, which is solution of a stochastic partial differential equation, which is driven by a Stratonovich noise. Uh, indeed, the, the, um, the term with the f is the Ito correction of the noise. Uh, to prove this theorem, we will need several properties. Uh, first, we, we have a well posedness result and an, energy and an energy estimate for the process x epsilon. Uh, which can be proved uh, using a classical contraction argument developed by Cato for nonlinear Schrodinger equations, and um, Ito formula up to uh, a regularization uh, argument. Uh, then we have the, this lem the following lemma, which allow to, to control the growth of the, the rescale process M epsilon, which behaves uh, up to a stopping time as a negative power of epsilon, uh, which can be chosen uh, as small as we want. We also uh, need the tightness result uh, in order to pass to the limit uh, as epsilon goes to zero, uh, which is the following, um, and uh, which can be uh, proved using uh, using uh, Aldous criterion. So with all these um, these results, uh, we can uh, pass to the limit in the Martingale problem. So as for the for the simple case for the perturbed test function method, we apply this method on the function phi, which is the scalar product between u and h, for h and, uh, and fixed function, which takes values in h1. So as before, it, uh, it involves uh, singularities in epsilon, so we have to, to correct the, the function phi with uh, two correctors, phi1 and phi2. Uh, finally, we get this expression for uh, L epsilon applied to uh, phi plus its correctors. So on the right hand side, the first term equals zero as, uh, as before because uh, phi does not depend on the process m. And uh, the term of, order ne of negative order in epsilon um, are, uh, um, 
are uh, equal zero to because uh, of the choice of uh, the corrector functions. Um, finally, we can, uh, we can define a candidate for the limit generator, which is in fact the L phi of U, where we do the term that appears in the right hand side have the, are the term of uh, order zero in epsilon in the, in the, first, uh, the first expression. And um, we will be able to read on this, on this gener generator the, the equation satisfied by the limit process U. So I will give more detail on, the, on, this, uh, on, this, uh, on this method uh, for the second problem of my thesis, which is the stochastic Zaccard system. So the, Zaccar the stochastic Zaccard system um, is a system with uh, two unknowns, the function U, which is solution of a Schrodinger equation, and the function N, which is solution of a wave equation. Here, the red term uh, denotes the the stochastic perturbation with a uh, phi, uh, which is a, a regularizing uh, operator, and W, which is a, a stochastic Wiener process. Uh, and the blue term uh, denotes uh, uh, an additional dumping term, which uh, will be crucial when we, when we study the, the limit as its goes to zero of this system. Um, in a deterministic case, uh, that is without the blue and red terms, uh, this system was introduced by Zakharov in 72, and the uh, first results came from uh, Sulem and Sulem in 79, where the, the state uh, global well positiveness uh, results. Uh, we can also see Taded and Aden, which uh, who, who, who states uh, results about the the limit as epsilon goes to zero of this, uh, of this system. And uh, then uh, more general results uh, came from, for example, uh, Bourguin or Colander, and more recently, uh, Ginib, Tsutsumi, and, and Velo. Uh, in the, the deterministic case, if you formally pass to the limit as epsilon goes to zero, you, you can identify uh, uh, the, the function n with minus modulus of u squared. And if you put it in the first equation, you recover a nonlinear uh, cubic Schrodinger equation. So we would like to, to obtain a similar result in the stochastic case. Uh, first, uh, we are interested by the, the well positiveness of this system. So it's uh, this first theorem. So for alpha greater or equal to zero, and t greater than zero, um, if phi is an Hilbert-Schmidt operator, under a good condition uh, on our initial data, there exists almost surely a solution UN, which is uh, L infinity in time and uh, takes value in uh, H3 uh, times H2. Uh, to prove this theorem, we, we use at first uh, for local well positiveness uh, a contraction argument uh, developed by Cato in the case of the, of the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And um, to get a more global result, we rewrite our system, uh, introducing Z epsilon, which satisfies a, a stochastic uh, wave equation, which is equation six. So that uh, UN is solution of the, the, the stochastic system of Zakharov, if and only if UM is solution of uh, the system seven. And uh, then we adapt uh, a proof uh, of uh, Sulem uh, and Sulem in order to get uh, an energy estimate and uh, an, an, estima an estimate which allow to propagate the, the regularity. Um, okay. Um, the note that for the for this theorem we can choose alpha equal to zero. So the dumping term does not play uh, an important role uh, when we study the well positiveness. However, it will uh, be essential to when we study the limit as epsilon goes to zero and. Uh, seems natural to think that we, had, we have to, to add a, a dumping term because uh, in order to compensate the, the additional energy coming from the, the stochastic term. So in a simpler example, uh, if x epsilon is solution of this equation and n epsilon of, on this equation, uh, which are uh, similar to the, the equation satisfied in the Zakhar system but in an ordinary differential equation framework, uh, on the left, you have the solution uh, x epsilon when uh, n satisfies the equation with the, uh, the dumping term. And on the right, on the left, and on the right, 
you have the same solution when uh, n uh, does not have the, the additional term in its equation and the limiting uh, solution, which is uh, exponential uh, minus uh, beta t for beta uh, Abronian motion. So you can see that without the dumping term, uh, even if uh, the global behavior may seem similar to the, to the, limit solution, the limiting solution, we have, uh, an addition, we have additional uh, oscillation around this behavior. So uh, in fact, it comes from the fact that uh, without the dumping term, um, the, f the process n epsilon does not converge to a, to a white noise. So uh, this, uh, this dumping term is really crucial in, uh, in our study. Uh, now we will explain the, the limit as epsilon goes to zero. We first need to rescale our system in order to place ourselves in a diffusion approximation framework. So this, uh, this scaling uh, introduces a new variable, which is z, which satisfies the, uh, this stochastic wave equation. So here, uh, z does not depend on, on epsilon, and it can be chosen uh, stationary, choosing the right uh, initial data. Uh, the benefit is that we control the, the growth of the rescale process z of uh, T over epsilon. As for the, the, Schrod the Schrodinger problem, it behaves as a negative power of epsilon, uh, which can be chosen uh, as small as we want. Uh, and there is a, a singularity of order minus one over two in epsilon on the, in the first equation, uh, which, uh, which corresponds to the, to the, um, the previous problems uh, of diffusion approximation. Uh, the, um, one of the principal problems of the, to study this limit is that uh, due to the additional uh, dumping term and stochastic term, the energy is not uh, preserved for, for our system and um, it uh, strongly depends on epsilon. And more importantly, if you, like the, if you look at the, the equation nine, uh, you can see that uh, uh, the, the equation uh, blows up as epsilon goes to zero. So uh, we cannot use the energy estimates that we, that we proved for the well-posedness. We have to, to work a little bit more. Uh, we can still uh, state uh, one of our main theorem, which is the following. For any t greater than zero, under good assumption uh, on the initial data and uh, on phi, uh, the solution u epsilon, which is solution of the second uh, uh, system here, which uh, I recall uh, it's, uh, is equivalent to the first system. Um, it converges in law to U, which is solution of uh, a nonlinear Schrodinger equation, uh, which is equation 10, uh, where F, the term with F is, uh, is again the Ito correction of the noise. So at the limit, we, we recover uh, St um, Stratonovich noise. Uh, note that if you, look at the, if you look at the first system, and you formally pass to the limit epsilon goes to zero, uh, you can identify n with a minus modulus of u squared minus the inverse of the Laplacian applied to phi dwt. And if you put it in the first equation, you recover uh, an equation which is similar to equation 10. Uh, the only term that is not present is the, the Ito correction here. So the intuition is when we look at the first, uh, the first uh, system uh, is a uh, quite true, quite uh, confirmed by the, by the theorem. Um, to prove this theorem, we will need to, to obtain an energy estimate uh, or something with, uh, which plays the role of an energy estimate, which is independent of epsilon in order to get convergences of, uh, of our processes. So this is this proposition for any t uh, greater than zero and uh, good, in a good condition on, uh, on our initial data and on uh, there exists a constant C which, uh, which does not depend on epsilon and uh, a stopping time to epsilon which uh, goes almost surely to T when epsilon goes to zero, such, as, uh, such that, sh such that uh, we have this bound on, uh, on the energy uh, H. So up to a, a stopping time to epsilon, we will get uh, bounds uh, which will be independent uh, of epsilon. So to prove this uh, proposition, we just apply the perturbed steps function method to H. Uh, so we will need to correct H with two correctors, H1 and H2. 
uh, we get a bound on the generator L epsilon applied to the, correct, uh, the corrected function. And we conclude with uh, Martingale inequalities. Uh, we also need a, a, a tightness result, uh, which is the following. We introduce a capital M epsilon of T, which is a, a primitive uh, of uh, the process M epsilon. And uh, again, under good condition on phi and on the initial data, uh, the process is uh, U epsilon, M epsilon, uh, square root of epsilon, uh, M epsilon, Z and zeta are tight in, uh, in their respective spaces. So to prove this, uh, this proposition, we use um, an interpolation argument uh, thanks to the, the bound that we, that we get on the previous proposition and uh, the Aldous criterion, which is, used, uh, which is applied here uh, in the subway space uh, H uh, minus 1 over 2. And uh, with all these uh, results, uh, we are now able to, to prove the convergence in the Martingale problem. So as for the, the, the Schrodinger problem, we, we use the function phi, which is the scalar product between u and h, for h, uh, which is an h1 function. And uh, we also use um, the, the square, the scalar product. Uh, in fact, it is sufficient to, to look at these two kinds of functions because uh, the tightness result uh, gives us that the, the processes are tight in, uh, in the space of continuous in time, uh, of functions which are continuous in time. So at the limit, we will recover a, a continuous in time uh, process. And we are, we are able to, to know that uh, it will be driven by a, a Wiener process and the general, uh, the infinitesimal generator of a linear process is of order two. So looking at uh, linear and quadratic uh, function uh, will be sufficient in order to identify the, the generator. So we apply uh, L epsilon to phi, and uh, as for the previous cases, we, uh, we correct it with two, two correctors. Um, we get uh, this expression for L epsilon applied to phi epsilon. Um, so here you can see that there is no more uh, term which are, for, which are of negative order uh, in epsilon. Uh, taking the terms of order one, we define a candidate for the limit generator, which is L of phi. Um, and uh, the first step of, uh, of our proof will be to identify uh, uh, the terms uh, that are present in this, uh, in this candidate. So we introduce uh, k of x, y, which is uh, the expectation uh, under the invariant measure uh, of these processes. And the uh, following lemma allows us to, to, to identify the, this kernel k uh, with uh, using the, the Hilbert-Schmidt operator phi. And uh, then if we, if we look at the, the expression L of phi, we will have a, a first term where, where um, the, the classical terms uh, which are present in the nonlinear Schrodinger equation uh, appears, and uh, we can also identify the Ito correction of the noise uh, in the third term. And uh, we have a, a second term which, in fact, corresponds to the, the quadratic variation uh, of the Martingale. Uh, okay, now we want to show the convergence because, uh, according to the definition of the um, of the infinitesimal generator. We know that uh, if phi epsilon is the function phi plus, plus uh, its correctors, um, phi epsilon of, uh, applied in u epsilon minus phi epsilon uh, applied in u zero minus the integral between zero and t of uh, L epsilon applied to phi epsilon is a martingale. So we would like to, to pass to the limit uh, as epsilon goes to zero directly in this, uh, in this martingale uh, property. So, it is stated by this lemma, uh, which, uh, which states that uh, phi of u of t minus phi of u is zero minus the integral of L applied to phi of u of s is a martingale. So indeed, the, our candidate, our candidate uh, L is indeed the infinitesimal generator of the limiting process u of t. Uh, this lemma uh, is, uh, is shown uh, um, using the the convergences um, 
uh, that are obtained uh, thanks to the tightness result and the score theorem. And uh, so the, the control of, uh, of, the op of uh, how we scale process uh, the epsilon. So now that we have uh, this martingale, um, the, identificator, the, the identification of the limiting process um, gives us uh, the quadratic variation of uh, M. And uh, using a martingale representation theorem, uh, we know that there exists a cylindrical linear process um, such that uh, M can be written as uh, this stochastic integral. Um, so that finally, uh, the, the limit process U satisfies this, equation, this uh, martingale problem and uh, on which we can read uh, the equation satisfied by U, which is a, a stochastic uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And uh, we conclude by uh, the, the uniqueness of uh, the solution of, uh, of this equation. So to summarize uh, all, this, uh, all this proof, we start from uh, the stochastic Zachary system. We apply the, gener the generator L epsilon to a specific function phi. Uh, then uh, singularities in epsilon appear. So you have to correct the function phi in a, in a function phi epsilon, uh, which gives us the, the quantity uh, L epsilon of phi epsilon. And um, uh, then we pass to the limit in the martingale problem and identify a quantity L of phi, uh, which uh, in fact is the limit, uh, the infinitesimal generator of the limiting process, and on which you can read the, uh, the, the equation satisfied by this process, which is the, the stochastic uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation. Uh, okay, so here we just have a convergence in law, so the Wiener process that it's uh, written uh, on the right side, uh, on the right hand side of the equation, um, is just given by the Martingale uh, representation theorem. But uh, we have no guarantee that uh, this Wiener process is the initial Wiener process that was uh, that was present in the in the stochastic Zachary system. And uh, for this problem, uh, the fact that we know the equation satisfied by the process Z. Um, gives us a better result, which is the fact that u epsilon converges in probability, and not only in law, to the process u, which is solution of the, of the stochastic, of the stochastic uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation, and which guarantees that uh, the Wiener process, uh, which appears in the last equation, uh, is indeed the Wiener process uh, that was introduced in the stochastic Zakharov system. To prove this theorem, uh, we use uh, equation 18, and we, thanks to the tightness that we proved before, uh, we, can, um, we can pass to the limit as epsilon goes to zero in this uh, equation. And then we apply a result by, uh, developed by uh, John Gia and Krulov, which give us that um, under the, the convergence in law and the uniqueness of the limit, uh, we can get a stronger result uh, about the convergence. Um, so this concludes uh, the study of the stochastic uh, Zakharov system in this thesis. And I, uh, now I, I will present uh, the last part of my thesis, which is about uh, asymptotic preserving scheme. So these schemes uh, allow to approximate uh, multi-scale pro multi problem. And uh, I will try to summarize the, the notion of, uh, of asymptotic preserving scheme. So, in a diffusion approximation problem, or more generally in a multi-scale problem, you have a solution uh, of, a continu a continuous, uh, of a continuous problem, which depends on epsilon, which is uh, here the process uh, x epsilon of t. And uh, this, uh, this solution converges as epsilon goes to zero, in a certain sense, uh, to a limit, uh, uh, a solution of a limiting uh, equation, which here is written uh, is uh, denoted by uh, x of t. So if you look at the uh, uh, numerical scheme for the, in order to approximate the solution of the, uh, of the continuous equation at epsilon greater than zero, you obtain a, a, a numerical scheme uh, x epsilon uh, of n, which depends on, also on epsilon and which, uh, as the time step um, size goes to zero, converge in a certain sense uh, to the solution of the continuous problem. 
the, the property of being uh, asymptotic uh, preserving is that uh, if you look at the numerical scheme and you pass to the limit uh, epsilon goes to zero, you obtain uh, a limiting scheme. And uh, this scheme will also approximate the, the continuous uh, limiting solution uh, as the time step size uh, goes to zero. So we will get, get a, um, a more rigorous definition later. But first, uh, we introduce a, a first model, uh, which is the following. So here you have a, a stochastic differential equation. And you already can see that um, the equation uh, satisfied by, uh, by n and m uh, is close to the, to the equation, uh, uh, the wave equation on the, in the Zakharov system, but in an uh, ordinary differential equation framework. So here you have the, the term with alpha, which uh, corresponds to the dumping term, and the term with lambda, which corresponds to the, the Laplacian term. Um, we can uh, define a, a numerical scheme for this, uh, for this problem using an operator uh, phi epsilon delta t. And uh, we define it as follow. The, the scheme at the time step uh, k plus 1 um, uh, is defined by phi epsilon delta t uh, applied to the, the scheme as the time step k, and uh, gamma k, which is a Gaussian random variable. Uh, more explicitly, we use uh, this scheme for, for the problem 19. Uh, which is uh, highly inspired by the work of uh, Shmuel uh, Rakoto Nyena and, uh, and Charles Edouard Breyer. Um, here, for the, the equation on n and m, we just use a, a middle point uh, discretization. And uh, note that for the process x, we use a prediction correction uh, method in order to be sure to discretize, to discretize the, the right notion of the noise, which would be a Stratonovich noise and not a an Ito noise. So with, uh, on this first exam example, I can give uh, the uh, a rigorous definition of the asymptotic preserving property. So first, uh, you have to satisfy uh, three assumptions. The first assumption is, um, is a stability uh, assumption, uh, which gives a bound on, uh, on the process n epsilon and m epsilon which is independent of uh, epsilon, of the time step size, and of the time state. The second um, assumption is a convergence assumption. We assume that uh, the numerical scheme uh, converges in distribution to the solution of the continuous problem, uh, which here is uh, defined by uh, x uh, epsilon. And uh, the last assumption is the fact that, uh, indeed, our numerical scheme with uh, epsilon greater than 0 converge uh, in distribution to a limiting scheme, xk, which uh, can be defined by, uh, by the following, uh, xk uh, plus 1 equals uh, phi delta t of xk and gamma k, where again, uh, gamma k is a Gaussian random variable. Um, under the, these three assumptions, the definition of the uh, asymptotic preserving is the following. Uh, a scheme, uh, uh, the scheme is said to be asymptotic preserving. Uh, if uh, the limiting scheme given uh, by the third assumption uh, converges in distribution to uh, the solution of the limiting equation. That, uh, for our first example, is given here by 23. So here is for the definition. And uh, thanks to this definition, uh, we are able to state our first result. That is, uh, that uh, the first uh, scheme introduced uh, is indeed a numerical scheme. Uh, in the sense of the definition. And uh, we give the limiting, uh, the limiting schemes, which is uh, given by 25, where you still can see the, uh, the, predictor, uh, the prediction correction uh, uh, method. Uh, I will illustrate this proposition by the following graphics. Um, here in blue, you have the solution of the limiting equation, which is encoded by a Milstein, uh, Milstein scheme, uh, which is a well-known scheme to in order to approximate the uh, stochastic differential equation. And uh, the three other curves uh, describe uh, uh, the, um, the numerical scheme for different uh, values of epsilon. And you can see that uh, for the smallest value of epsilon, uh, the, the behavior of the, the, of, the limiting, the, the, of the numerical scheme 
is almost the same that uh, the behavior of the of the limiting solution. So this uh, this graphic seems to uh, confirm the our, uh, our theoretical result. Uh, now we introduce a, a second uh, a second example of uh, of problem, which is still a, a, a stochastic differential equation. But here the equation on uh, on x epsilon uh, gets uh, closer to the the equation. Uh, of the nonlinear Schrodinger equation on the in the Zakharov problem, so here uh, the term with mu corresponds to the, the Laplacian, uh, the term with the Laplacian in the the, the Schrodinger equation, and uh, we give uh, our numerical scheme. So here there is no more uh, there is no more prediction correction uh, argument, but we only use a middle point uh, discretization because we know that uh, it gives. Uh, Good stability uh, properties. Uh, note that now the the process x epsilon uh, uh, has a complex values. So we also have a proposition which said that uh, this uh, numerical scheme is also asymptotic preserving, and uh, the limiting scheme is given uh, by uh, by equation uh, 28. So as the as the processes takes. Uh, Complex values. I uh, I show you the real and the comparison between the real and imaginary parts of the of the asymptotic scheme, uh, preserving scheme uh, uh, that was uh, that was written on the previous slide and of the of the limiting scheme. So you can see that uh, here for a small value of, of epsilon, the the behaviors are are very similar. Okay, and uh, finally we can get to the to our, uh, our principal objective, which is the a numerical scheme for the Zakharov system. So here I will only present uh, numerical uh, uh, experience experiences. Um, so we start by uh, taking a Dirichlet condition at the boundary, and we present uh, our main uh, our main uh, numerical scheme, which is the following. Uh, so here the A denotes uh, the matrix. The matrix that uh, encodes the, the Laplacian operator, and uh, on the um, equation on uh, on zeta, you can uh, see the last term, which uh, which describes the the stochastic perturbation, where gamma LK are independent uh, Gaussian random variable, and uh, phi uh, L of G are uh, sine functions. Uh, we also use a, a relaxation method. In order to deal with the singularity, the nonlinearity uh, modulus of x epsilon squared, um, we use uh, we could have used a Krog Nicholson scheme, but uh, relaxation method uh, is less costly in uh, in computations than uh, than Krog Nicholson, and uh, and this method is uh, is very used uh, in order to to discretize a nonlinear Schrodinger equation. Uh, one can refer, uh, for example, uh, to the work of uh, Christoph Bess. So, if we look at this scheme, we can see formally that uh, it seems to converge to the following scheme, which in fact is a, a scheme for the for a nonlinear Schrödinger equation with a relaxation method. And uh, we will also compare our scheme with the the following scheme, uh, which is uh, an adaptation of a scheme uh, introduced by uh, Glasse. Uh, for the Zakharov system, um, where here uh, the main difference is that there is no um, no relaxation method, but uh, there is a, an additional uh, time step because uh, the equation on n and on uh, z uh, uh, involves uh, the time step uh, k minus one, in addition to k and k plus one. So we will run tests uh, in order to to see uh, firstly the first the, um, the convergence of our relaxation scheme to the relaxation uh, Schrodinger scheme, and to compare the, our scheme with the with the numerical scheme uh, adapted from Glasse. Uh, for each uh, test, we choose um, uh, two different uh, initial uh, data: the standard Gaussian function and the ground state for. Uh, for a Schrodinger equation, which is also a standing wave uh, in the Zakharov system. So first, we can see uh, 
here the comparison between our scheme and uh, our numerical scheme and the candidate for its uh, its limit, uh, which is uh, in a, in, a, in a L2 norm uh, error for different values of, of epsilon. Here the initial data is the standard Gaussian uh, function, and you can see as epsilon goes to zero that uh, that the, the error the error uh, decreases. So it seems to confirm our, our intuition that uh, the limiting scheme of uh, the, our re, uh, relaxation uh, scheme for Zakharov is uh, the relaxation scheme for uh, the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. However, if we compare our scheme with the, the scheme from Glasset, we see that the, the error uh, increases uh, as epsilon goes to zero. So it seems to to tell us that the Glasset scheme is not uh, a good scheme uh, to approximate uh, the, the stochastic Zakharov uh, system uh, for small values of epsilon. And in fact, uh, one can check that um, the discretization of the, of the Glasset schemes introduce correlation between the, the increments of the Wiener process, which uh, that is, uh, is not a, a good discretization for, for our limiting process. So in conclusion, uh, we work on diffusion approximation problems for two equations, uh, the nonlinear Schrodinger equations and the Zakharov system. Um, for, each, uh, for each equation, we show the well-posedness results and also uh, the convergence to uh, stochastic nonlinear Schrodinger equations. And we try to, to approach the the, the theory of uh, asymptotic preserving schemes for partial stochastic uh, differential equation. Um, there are several perspectives to, the, to this work because um, first, um, in our study of Zakharov system, we, uh, we wanted to, to identify the, the difficulties coming from the, the stochastic uh, framework. So we chose, to, we chose to place ourselves in a, in a simple, uh, in a simple um, PD framework. So it would be interesting to, to adapt other methods for this system in order to, to study the problem in higher dimension. We could also study the Klein-Gordon uh, equation and more, more generally the, the Klein-Gordon-Zakharov system uh, because um, there are deterministic uh, results on this system and that are uh, proven, for example, by uh, Mas uh, Masmudi and Nakanishi, where they studied uh, the convergence as uh, delta n epsilon goes to zero of this system. And so it could be uh, interesting to, to try to get similar results in a stochastic framework. And finally, uh, we could think about the building a theory for asymptotic preserving schemes for stochastic partial differential equation. But, um, I think it would be a, um, a difficult problem since uh, we need uh, to prove uh, stability um, properties and uh, we have to use uh, several uh, notions of weak convergences. So this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much.